Hi guys. Um, today I'm just gonna go uh, go over the Troll VM. I picked it up from Van Van Hub, and I'll leave the links in the description below if you wanna play with it in your free time. Um, basically, what you want to do is to pick up, download this VM and uh, put it in, start it up with the VMware or VirtualBox or anything, and then make sure it's in configured to run in NAT and uh, the first step is to try to identify the box itself. Uh, usually most CTFs have uh, a HTTP running on them and that's on port 80. So we start by looking for ports, uh, systems that have port 80 open on your system or on your network. So I run in map open port only port 80 on my subnet and I have this running just to confirm that <coughs> I'm on the right system I tried to check uh, browse to read and voila we have a troll so this is our troll VM so the first thing that comes to mind is to try to scan for all services and also the version uh, of, uh, of uh, the system that's running. So with this we shall run in map. We do a service and version scan for all ports on this host. In that as as that runs, <coughs> when you are encounter like web applications in a maybe in a penetration test environment or maybe in a CTF the first thing that comes to mind is to try to use things like Babsu to uh, to crawl them or or Nikto or WFRS to discover hidden files and uh, directories but in this case in most cases the, the best way to start with is to run a robots.txt and see any indexed, uh, uh, any uh, uh, disallowed directories or files that are hidden from our web crawlers. So here we have a secret directory. We try to check check it out, and all it has is this neutral mod. And going through the source, there's pretty much nothing except for uh, this troll image. So this is a dead end. That means we're left with a pretty uh, nothing to do. So we go back to our scans and we realize that we have a couple of ports that are open, starting with FTP, SSH, and HTTP that hasn't yet yielded anything much for us. So the um, the first thing I'll do in this scenario is to try to make sure that I I first look out for ports. Uh, or services that have default logins or uh, anonymous logins. For example, FTP is known to have anonymous logins. That's if anonymous logins are enabled. So we try to FTP to. So, so anonymous is anonymous logins are allowed. So we log in, and when we do a listing of uh, the files in the system, we realize we have one file that's uh, a load of pickup. What we do, we get this file. So. <coughs> We exit the system. <coughs> now, since we have this uh, load of pick, if this pickup file, it should be uh, co containing some traffic capture. Uh, Washer comes to mind or Network Miner to try to uh, extract different um, objects or files or images that are inside inside the capture file. But uh, I bypassing all that, I prefer to use string string low the pickup 
looking through here, um, I realized there was a user logged in as Anonymous. Right here, here, he was transferring a file called secretstaff.txt, which is interesting. And in the file, this secretstaff.txt had this content in here. Um, well, well, well. And you just a clever little devil, you almost found the, the, the blah 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 blah. Sat. Right, then this looks familiar, right? Come to think of it, this could be a password for maybe uh, the SSH login or something. It could be a directory to this hidden directory in here and a secret. So we try that out and we get a, a 404. But not to give up, we keep play, trying to poke around and then we realize that there's another file that's in here. Okay? So when we copy this uh, file and we try to uh, try to download it to our system, <coughs> we get that file. So we try to see what kind of file this is. It shows that it's an ELF file standing for executable link. It's in an executable link format. That doesn't help us much except from uh, if we try to uh, view the strings that are strings that are uh, contained inside this file. And looking in here, the couple the couple of our uh, uh, lib files that are called for in that executable file. And down here we see find address this to proceed. So we look at this and try to uh, find that address. And it seems like it's not existing there. But if you try to uh, poke around more, we find this. And then <coughs> we try to navigate through the different directories. And in here we see one with the text file. And these look pretty much like passwords to us. This, this, and some of them look like there's pretty much commands that are supposed to be run. That are, for right now, it doesn't have any much meaning to us. But what's more juicy is this text, uh, is this uh, directory, this folder contains the password. And the best guess is that password text contains a password. So this has to be a password. We can only test that if uh, we try to connect to our, uh, the, SSH, uh, the SSH client. So we try to run SSH. Now, with the usernames, so in here there are different uh, stuff that look like usernames. So we can try this or this, but I'll go with overflow. The other best way is to try to run all these different names in a password or in a brute force uh, uh, to say like Hydra or any other brute force, as I said, brute force tool. So we try to log in in here. Let me grab grab a nice password right here. So we try to log in and hoping that I'll fall into the shell but uh, that seems not to be the case because that's not the password so what do we do now going back to this folder it says this folder contains the password and if we are in this folder this is where logic lo logic and guesswork comes to play because I had to literally scratch my head and pull our strands of my hair just to figure out that maybe I could use pass.txt as the password since it says this folder contains the password or this position we should have said this folder contains the file the password file but it says this folder contains the password so anywho we try to uh, <coughs> we try to uh, log in again with pass.txt as the password and voila we're in and since we're in we try to navigate to our home directory and 
all fades pretty much nothing for us in here really nothing for us in here so uh, we try to cut the passport file and as it looks in here we are we pretty much have nothing really nothing to uh, play with because it seems like all users have been uh, uh, removed except for the troll uh, user so when we do we try to do uh, a process listing scan to see really what's happening in here and we realize still there's nothing much but in here we see that there is a filter bun and filter bun is a pretty much an intrusion prevention software framework which protects like uh, computers and servers from uh, brute force attacks so pretty much brute force won't work and we are locked out we kicked out so that's evidence that maybe the server kind of kicks us out after some period of time using that that the, the, the that user account overflow kicks us out and we don't know really what to do to stay in and get root. So at this point of time, you things are really getting ugly and you don't know really what to do. So try to log in again. Bastard takes. So right now, uh, we have two ID files that are rewritable by the user that we logged in. So we try, uh, <coughs> we type find. Uh, dash rewritable we pipe this to a uh, dead nil and down here we see we have this file so we try to see if this file belongs to our is owned by root right so And as it looks, this file belongs is owned by root. So let's try to check out the contents of this file. And as we can see, it's a Python file that imports the OS and Sys modules, and it it uh, executes a system command to remove everything in the temporary directory is a, it's a, the important command in here is the system execution so what comes to mind is uh, what if we can write a C oh which we've timed out so let's log in again we, we, we time out every after some time so the next thing that comes to mind is what if we can write uh, a C routine program that will invoke a bash shell for us and set our user ID to a root that's to zero Let's do that. So right now, the ten. Right, and we create this file. Uh, basically, what it's going to do is just going to set our user ID to zero and then evoke our bash shell. So change mode. Change mode of var. And that's done. So we execute <coughs> we execute a file. Oh shit. This is the So we have a file in here. So right now, our user ID is this. We have no rights at all. So um, we go to our our cleaner cleaner.py file. That's under lib slash log slash cleaner. .py. 
And in here, what we're going to do, we're just going to uh, delete all this. And in here, we're going to change change ownership. We change the owner to root root of this file. Var slash ten slash root. And we're going to change the mode. That's the execution mode to four seven five five. And basically that's it. Save a file, get out. When we try to execute a file, times a word. So if we check now the ownership of this file of our Sirotin file, we realize that it's a uh, the ownership is root okay so executing id oh sorry executing the, the file var slash root and id sets our our user id to root and now we in as root so this means we can navigate to the root directory there's a file, encrypt text. So it says, good job, you did it. And this is how you can get control of the VM.